so I'm just going to get some sound. Okay. I grew up in Lawrence, which is um, one of the poorest cities in the country even today. It's like the 23rd poorest city in the United States. And I'm sure that it was probably that way when I was younger, um, growing up there in the 70s. And we lived in a housing project, which was a project that was originally built for, built for um, veterans, war veterans, and I think sort of changed over to low-income housing. And we lived there with, you know, probably three or 400 other kids and mostly single moms, and we really had the run of the place. It was, I say to people, it was part Stand By Me, part um, Lord of the Flies. <laughs> it was just survival of the fittest for sure. When it came time to make my own film, my own first film, I remember thinking long and hard about it and sort of just thinking, okay, if you want to make a film, you have to want to make this film, whether it's going to be seen or not seen, you know, whether you're going to get paid or be unpaid, whether, um, whether it's going to get finished or not finished, like you have to want to do this no matter what. And so I thought long and hard about what would I want to do no matter what. And I decided, you know, I, I've really always wanted to know what happened to my childhood friend. We sent the film out to HBO because I sort of really felt like this was always an HBO film. And, but they didn't respond for many months. And I was really feeling, you know, downhearted. And I had wanted to get it into Sundance, and I think we had just gotten the Sundance rejection, and so I was sort of at a loss, you know, and I, I gave myself a deadline. Well, I'm going to wait until a certain date, and if um, HBO doesn't call me by then, I'm going to call them and just say, you know, you know, just let me know if you don't want it because I need to move on. Two days later, they called back and said, can, can you come to Manhattan on Friday? Or so I asked um, the editor to come with me, and we went to New York, and um, I remember go walking into HBO and saying, thinking I was meeting with one person, and the you know receptionist security downstairs saying, "Go upstairs and meet so and so," and I said, "Well, who's that?" And they said, "Well, it's Sheila Nevins' assistant." And I was like, "You know, Sheila Nevins? I didn't think we were meeting Sheila Nevins, who's the you know president of HBO documentary program. What do you mean we're meeting Sheila?" And um, and they said, "Yeah, go up to her floor." And I was like, "We're on the up elevator to Sheila Nevins' office, like." Let's, you know, let's appreciate this moment. And I'll never forget, like, total deadpan, like, a beat goes, and she's like, who's Sheila Nevins? <laughs> and I just sort of was like, you know what, Melanie, you know, don't take yourself so damn seriously sometimes. Like, big deal, whatever, you know. And it was good. I needed that sort of deflating there for a moment. But at the same time, I also needed to appreciate that moment because it was a long way from where I had come when I first started the film. You know, we walked out of the thing, and I, I said to to Rachel, you know, don't say anything, let's walk around the corner. And we got around the corner and I started jumping up and down. I was like, ah, you know, singing, dancing, the whole thing. And uh, and she was like, what, what, did they say something? Like, did they, you know, are they, and I said, no. And she said, I said, but they're going to take the film. And she said, how do you, you know, how do you know that if they didn't say anything? I'm like, Sheila Evans isn't going to waste four hours on somebody if she's not taking the film. Like, she's taking the film. I'm like, I want to go buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> and I did. They weren't even, you know, Manolo's or anything. They were like dance go clogs or something. It was great jumping up and down in the streets of Manhattan, you know, knowing they were going to take the film. <laughs>